All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, looks like we've got quite a few people in the waiting room that are joining. So I'll give it a minute or so. Um, got three more coming in. As always, if you guys want to turn your camera on, feel free to. You don't have to, of course. Um, I will ask if it's all right with everybody, if you could just mute your microphone, um, just so we don't have any feedback. And then when we get to the question and answer section, I'll, I might ask you to kind of unmute yourself so we can have some more collaborative chats. Um, a few continuing to join here for the sake of time. Everybody's busy, everybody's time's valuable. Figure we could just hop right in now that we're a minute in. Um, just an FYI to everybody, if you are coming in a little bit late, we do record all these. We'll have all these sent to you if you registered for the webinar. And then we'll also have these on the website. Um, while I'm kind of going through these first, first few slides that everybody's probably used to by now, <laughs> feel free to say hello in the chat box. Uh, say your name, title, whether you're an engineer, architect, building designer, permit reviewer, all that fun stuff, and uh, where you're joining us from. And then today, we are going to be talking through designing trusses in clear calcs. So thanks for, thanks for posting that in there, Laurent. Um, so we're going to be looking at efficient wood and steel structures. And then we could pop over to that next one, Laurent. All right. The fun about clearcalcs.com slide that probably most of you guys have heard uh, every single week when we do these webinars. But Clear Calcs, if you're unfamiliar, is a cloud-based structural calculation software um, combining FEA uh, analysis, powerful FEA analysis, and easy-to-use design tools. Wood, engineered lumber, steel, cold form steel, concrete. Um, looking to be more accurate, eliminating wasting wasted time with load linking, swap material, member selector, all that fun stuff, and then available everywhere. Um, for anybody that was in last week's webinar, I was in Charlotte. I was actually on Clear Calcs um, on the plane on my way to Charlotte. Um, so you can really access it anywhere you got access to internet. And then meeting the presenters. Uh, most of you know me and Laurent. Uh, you've probably spoken with us, whether it be through email or, or through one of these sessions. Um, I'm our director of customer success. So hopefully here to make sure you're successful in Clear Calcs and answer all your questions. Uh, Laurent is our North American engineering content lead, professional engineer, and he's leading all of our work in creating new engineering calculators, um, which we'll touch on all the new calculators that uh, he and the team have recently put out at the end of today's webinar. All right, then how to ask questions. If you're unfamiliar with Zoom, um, you'll see that chat button. It looks like most of you guys are already seeing how you can kind of say hey in the chat box, um, ask your questions. You could even toggle it off between everyone and sending a message to a particular person, whether it be me or maybe one of your friends or colleagues who's on today's session. Um, so yeah, definitely be sure to use that. We will have a Q&A section session at the end. So we'll make sure to get to all those questions, time permitting. Then I'll pass it over to Laurent here. All right. Um, thank you, Connor. And thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, a pretty exciting webinar for us. I think we've been um, hearing from a lot of you about wanting to design trusses easily in clear calcs, just in general, actually, um, and having trouble with that. So we've been working pretty hard on just making that happen. and. Uh, recently, we've released basically the features that let you design trusses in ClearCalc. So today we're going to go over those. Um, just, you know, I think the, the classic, what's a truss? I imagine most of you here probably know what a truss is, but we'll go over it pretty quickly just to make sure we're all on the same page. Then we'll talk about kind of what the basics are of how we design a truss in ClearCalcs. Um, and then we're going to jump straight into examples. So Gonna try to keep this pretty practical today in terms of how do you design your trust in clear calcs, especially when we're doing the examples. Feel free to interrupt, feel free to ask questions. 
Um, we're going to do this interactively here. And the goal is really that by the end of this webinar, you should be able to design most of your trusses in clear calcs. Um, and we're also going to have some help after the webinar. We'll talk about that by the end. So let's get to it. Okay, so I told you we talked a little bit about what's a truss. Um, basically, a truss, what it is, it is um, a structure that's resisting loads, so snow loads, wind loads, whatever that might be, and it's typically taking those in tension or compression. That's kind of the primary um, way that it resists these. So obviously, you've got some tension in, say, a bottom cord of your truss here or a compression at the top cord or something like that. Um, and then we often get the question about what's the difference with that and a frame and, you know, a frame can be what you put a picture in. That's not what we're talking about here today, obviously. Uh, what we're looking at for frames is really how can we um, resist lateral loads with bending? That's the big key part is bending. So it might behave or it might look like a truss, but it, what we'll typically treat as a frame is we'll know that there's some bending going on in the the, the members versus just tension or compression. Um, in general, trusses will have pretty long spans and then frames typically shorter spans, but you might see um, multiple bays. So you'll have some columns in the middle or something like that. Um, obviously you can also get some frames with pretty long spans, especially when you talk about um, uh, industrial buildings or something like that, but just basic, basic uh, definitions here. Okay. So let's jump into how do we do this in clear calcs now? We've got a truss. We're going to focus on trusses today, but um, all of that we're talking about also works with frames. Um, it's really the same principle, same everything, same method. Um, but we call this truss webinar, so we're going to talk about trusses today. Uh, but like I said, if there's anything that you want to do that's with a frame, literally the same thing. You just hit that portal frame wizard analysis button there instead of the truss analysis. Um, Okay, so first step is we're going to create our truss and frame analysis. Um, I'm going to guess quite a few of you have probably tried this before in clear calcs. If not, I encourage you to do it. So like really in the sun's holes for any name. Well, uh, we got someone uh, we had a question. Oh, oh, so maybe someone forgot to mute. <laughs> no problem. Um, Okay, so like I said, I was saying um, our trusses and portal frame wizards are super powerful. You can design really complex trusses, really crazy frames um, in a blink of an eye. It's really, really fast. So I encourage you to try that. Um, obviously, once you create this, you're going to enter your geometry, your loads, and we also let you enter the member sizes. That's if you know it. So if you're analyzing, say, an existing truss um, and you already know what sizes you're dealing with, you're going to be able to, um, to, to put that here. Um, if not, don't worry too much about it. We'll come back to that and I'll explain what that means later. Um, then this is what we've been working on. So creating a design only calculation, and we're going to do this with the link to analysis module. And I forgot to update the screenshot. It's actually no longer in beta. It's fully supported already. So you'll be able to do that now. And that's going to be, um, when you're creating a new calculation, you scroll down a little bit and you'll see these design only calculations. And once that's done, we're going to link to the truss element. And we've got the option here of linking to the envelope. So say you're designing your bottom cord, um, you're going to look at, we're going to look at basically what's the worst case for tension, bending, shear, whatever that might be. And we'll put it all together. That way you can just design for the worst case um, and find what size. Because typically for a bottom cord, I think a lot of people would just keep the same member the entire way. So it saves you some time that way. But you can also design by individual member if you're looking to say sharpen the pencil and, and save a bit of weight somewhere. Um, and we'll go over what that looks like um, as part of the examples. And then once that's done, there's a couple of things you can adjust um, specific to your uh, members. So for instance, the duration factor, um, bracing condition, obviously some, some components might be fully braced, some components might not be braced. And then once that's done, you've got your loads. Everything's going to be already in the um, calculator. The only thing left to do is to pick what size member you need. And so, for instance, here I've got a 6 by 18 Sutter Yellow Pine. Um, but you can see here in the member selector, um, I hope most of you have tried with our member selector at this point. But if you're new to clear calcs, that's probably one of our coolest feature. 
where we'll show you every single kind of standard size, whether that's for steel, that's for um, cold form steel, whether that's for wood. Um, and then you can see, is it passing in compression, tension, moment, interaction, and what's governing? So you can see what that looks like there. Um, and that's basically it. At that point, we've designed our, our, our trust members. So we can do that for the webs, we can do that for the cords, and, and, and we're done. So two things to keep in mind here. Um, when we're doing the linking, this works in a one-way direction. So when you're linking, um, say you've got your trust analysis, and um, if I go back, we talked about you can specify what you've got. Um, as you design your, your trust, you might change your section size. This won't be updated in the trust analysis automatically. Um, the reason for that is because we have to keep running the analysis and just to save time that way we're um, we're keeping it that way. Though we are working on perhaps implementing kind of a two-way linking. The good news is in trusses, typically that's not going to have too big of an impact on your loads. So you can just go at the end and um, and update your members that way. And then you can double check. And we'll, we'll do that as part of the example just to confirm what that looks like. And then the other thing is right now, we're not considering global buckling. So what does that mean? We've got a great example here of a truss that's going into uplift and we see the bottom cord is buckling, but it's actually, it's not just a single part between panel points that's buckling. It's actually the entire bottom cord that's buckling as one. Um, that's not something that we're checking right now. Um, big reason here is because a lot of residential uh, Trusses, for instance, wouldn't necessarily have that problem because they've got bracing by a diaphragm or something like that. Um, but definitely something that you'll want to keep in mind when you're designing, say, bigger trusses or things where your 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 cords aren't fully braced or braced regularly or something like that. So something to keep in mind. We do check buckling, but we'll check with the member length between panel points, basically. All right. All right. So. That was the quick and easy how to design a truss in clear calcs. Now let's go and actually do it. So for the first one, we're going to design a gazebo truss. So I put a picture of one here. Uh, could be anywhere, could be anything, but this is just to get us going. So what we're going to do, we're going to design the cords. We're going to design for the top cord, bottom cord, and the webs. And we've got a snow load and we've got a uplift load as well. So. I'm going to jump now into clear calcs and if you'll just give me one second. Okay. Here we go. Um, let me know if you can't see my screen, but I think you should be able to see it now. So I'm going to come here and create a new calculation. And we're going to scroll down and we're going to select our trust analysis wizard. So I'm going to click on this. And first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to choose my trust type. So right now you can see we've got a flat Warren truss. I'm going to click select here. And we've got quite a few trust types here, right? It's quite a, a bit of a mouthful. Um, if we click on this little I button here, you'll see we've got different pictures of the different trust types. So you'll be able to see. Now, going back to our example, we're dealing with a how roof truss. So that's the one we're going to select. And we can see it's updated here. Now you can see there's quite a few things on here. The 1.65 PLF on the diagram um, that's for the self-weight. Just for the sake of right now, keeping that diagram a little cleaner, we're going to go down and disable the self-weight. So where it says distributed loads, we're just going to say no to include self-weight. Um, obviously, that's, that, that comes down to your engineering judgment of whether you need to consider the self-weight or not. In this case, we're just going to ignore it for now. Okay, so when we were talking about our example, we had a 50-foot span and then two-foot eave. So I'm going to go total truss width. 50 feet and Eve plan length two feet. And we also had a four and 12 roof pitch. So I could do the math myself or we can use clear calcs calculator. 
So I know that um, obviously I've got two sides of this roof. So four and 12, I can do the width of the roof, which is W divided by two. So we get one thing, uh, one side times four divided by 12. And that gives me the, um, the width of half the roof times the pitch. And that tells me the total truss height at the top. So we can see it's eight feet and four inches. So I've got my geometry set up now. Next, I've got um, my member selection. And you can see by default, we've got two by six, uh, hem fur number two. Um, you can also click here, by the way, if you're, um, if you're going back into this and you're looking to design a uh, truss, we've also got a video here you can watch just to, to catch up on this. So for now, we're gonna actually leave these, um, these members like this for now because we haven't actually designed them. So we're just gonna not touch them. The last part is our distributed loads. So two things to keep in mind here. When we're thinking about our top cord, we let you enter loads vertically or perpendicular. And the reason we do that is for most things such as dead loads or snow load, we would expect these to be um, parallel to gravity. And so we would enter as vertical loads. However, if we're talking about say wind uplift, which acts perpendicular to the roof, then we would have it acting perpendicular this way. Um, just a little thing, but it, it does help to, to keep that in mind. And then separately, we can also add different loads for the eaves if we want to. In this case, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. So if I go back to our example, first things we wanted to look at was a sixty pounds per square foot snow load. So snow load vertical um, parallel with gravity. Um, so I've got a sixty pounds per square foot, and in the example we had given a twelve foot tributary width for the uh, truss. So I'm going to type times twelve feet. And I've got then 720 pounds per linear foot. And I'm just going to remove the load perpendicular for now. And I'm also going to remove the load on the bottom cord. So if I come back up now and I look at my truss, I can see I've got that 720 PLF load applied over the eaves and over the top cord as well. And I can look at the results of the analysis. I can look at the bending moment in the cords. I can look at the shear. And if I hover, it'll tell me the exact values. Um, axial loads especially, so I can see 45,200 pounds tension, and then in compression we've got as well some, some pretty high values, and I can also look at displacements, so I can see that at the mid-span right now I'm at about 7.6 inches um, displacement. That's the one case here where in these results, these, uh, these cord members are actually going to affect a lot about the deflection, so we're going to come back to this later. So now, we need to figure out what, what size section we need to add, right? So I'm gonna create a new calculation now. And I'm gonna scroll down again until I hit the design only. And we're gonna design a wood member using the ASD method. And here we're gonna click link to analysis module. So it's gonna create a member now. And I'm just gonna rename this now to top cord. We're gonna start with that. And now you can see it looks a little scary. We've got the error messages. So I'm gonna click here and you'll see we've got that big, uh, it's not so big actually, but the, the, the red link icon. So this is what I'm gonna click. And I'm going to go to my truss. And now you can see we've got quite a few members in the truss, but importantly, we've got these envelope load cases. So as I discussed earlier, Envelope means we're taking the worst case loads, we're putting them all together, and we're also taking the longest length, which has an impact if we're thinking about buckling or compression. So it's basically, you know that you're conservative, you know that you're safe if you're designing with the envelope um, load cases. If for some reason you wanted to get a little sharper with the pencil, you could go with individual members here. But for now, we're just gonna use the envelope for the top cord. And here we go. So we can look now and clearly this is failing. The loads are really, really high. Um, if I go into detailed view here, so I click details, switch to detail, I can see a bit more details. I can see I've got almost 50,000 pounds in compression going on. A little much for a small two by six. So if I go back to my example, we were looking to design with number one Douglas for uh, large, so I'm going to open our member selector, 
click the select button. And this is gonna open the member selector. A lot of things that are failing right now, that's because we're looking at two by threes, obviously not gonna work. So I can filter now by species and I can select Douglas for large. And we said number one grade, so we'll filter that number one grade. And now we can see all the dimensional lumbers probably not passing. But as we get into the heavier timbers, now we're talking. Now we're getting some stuff that's passing, right? So if I look, for instance, if I wanted an 8 by 8 not passing, 8 by 10, we're still at 291%. That's a little high, so we're going to keep going until we see 8 by 16 passes for everything, including the combined uh, bending and compression interaction, which is our, our, our killer here. We can also look if we want to say a 10 by 10, oh, doesn't pass, 10 by 12, neither, but 10 by 14 passes. So in this case, we're just going to stick to a 8 by 16. So I'm going to pick that. And here we go. I know that it passes now. I can see I'm at 87% utilization. Life is good. You will see there's a little warning that showed up, however. It says the member selected does not match the member selected in the analysis calculator. If you remember, we can see it here, we've got a two by six right now in our trust analysis. So that's where I was saying, we're gonna wanna go back now and um, make this match. So we can go to the top chord, but what we'll do is actually, we're gonna do every single component first, and then we can go back to our, our trust. Up to you how you wanna do that. So I'm gonna go now and create a new calculation. Wood member design only, link to analysis module. And this one we'll call it bottom chord. And clicking the link button here. Trust, again, I'm gonna do the envelope for the bottom chord. And you can see it pulled into two by six. If I go into detailed mode again, just to see the loads, we can see in this case, tension is where it's at. For the bottom chord, 45,000 pounds. Again, that's quite a bit for a small two by six. So we're gonna to look to redesign that. And so I'm gonna click the select button here, species Douglas fir, grade number one, and we're gonna scroll down. Now, we picked a um, eight by 16 in the previous um, calculation for the top chord. So if you wanna keep with the eight inch width for our members, we can tell that eight by eight doesn't quite pass, when we look at the interaction between tension and um, uh, bending, but an eight by 10 does pass. Now, one thing when we're dealing with, um, especially with tension members, if we've got holes in the member, that's something that we'll wanna consider. So actually in this case, um, we might have say three quarter inch bolts going through. So we could just type in three quarter inches um, or three quarter inch hole. And that does reduce the tension capacity a little bit because we obviously we've got a hole in the section. But we can see in this case, um, we're still passing. So life's good. And finally, we're just gonna quickly design the webs as well. We come here, wood member design only, link to analysis module. And again, I'm gonna hit the link button, T1. And again, envelope for the webs. And if we look here, again, the two by six doesn't pass. So I'm just going to do the same thing again quickly. Douglas for large, number one. Scrolling down. If we want to keep again by an eight inch width, I'm going to guess, yeah, the eight by eight is perfectly fine. So we're going to select the eight by eight Douglas fir. And that's it. We've now got our top cord our bottom core and our webs designed. That was it. So if I go now, um, the last thing we wanted to do is we've got these warnings here about the uh, not matching, right? With our trust analysis. So if I want a summary, I can go to the member schedule here and I can see top cord eight by 16, bottom cord eight by 10, webs eight by eight. I can go to the trust again now and just quickly, we'll, we'll make these match. So top chord, we said eight by 16 and Douglas fir number one. Uh, webs, we said eight by eight. And bottom chord, I think we had eight by 10. 
And you can see now that these are actually recalculating. So that's important, especially when we're dealing, say, with a frame or something like that, where changing the size of the member changes the stiffness and it might actually affect the loads. Um, everything will automatically update with these design calculations. Um, so that's really important because you can be confident now that um, once this is done, it's matching. And so we can see actually now our bottom cord seems to be failing. Um, and that might just be because we've got a bit more load going into it now that we've got these bigger members. So if I open it, I can see, oh, there we go. Our tension bending interaction has failed. So I can now go again in the member selector. And instead of an eight by 10, maybe I'll pick an eight by 12 because that seems to be working. And then again, I'm gonna wanna just update it. Um, typically it's not gonna be a very uh, long process to do this, but good to know it. So if I do this, now it's gonna recalculate everything, but pretty confident that this is gonna pass this time. Um, okay, so now we talked about checking for uplift as well. So one of the things to keep in mind with our truss analysis and with our frame analysis, oh, my bottom cord is still failing. We'll come back to that, not too, I can see it's at 106%. So I'm not too worried about this. We'll leave it at that for now. Um, as I was saying, our truss analysis, um, it only supports one load case at a time. And since we're checking for snow load right now, we've got gravity loads. And you know what I just remembered with our bottom cord, for instance, if we're looking to be a bit more efficient, one thing I forgot to consider was that we're actually dealing with snow loads. So we can increase our duration factor to 1.15. And here we go, we're happy now. We're at 92% utilization. So um, you could obviously do this for the top cord and the webs as well. Um, in the sake of being conservative, um, we're leaving it at 1.0 by default, but then if you need a bit of extra capacity, such as now, you can use that 1.15 or, or whatever for the load that you're looking for. Now, if I wanna check uplift, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to need to actually create a copy of the truss, the top cord, bottom cord, and webs. And the reason we do that, you'll see, is, um, is because we want to be able to check a different load case. So if I wanna keep this organized, what I can do here is go to the member schedule and I can create a group. And I'm gonna call this snow loads. And I can then drag my calculations into this group. And now I know that I'm analyzing everything here for my snow loads. And I can see here, I can come back. Now I can create a new group and we'll call this one uplift loads, and we can just go and copy this entire group now. Gonna take a second, and we're gonna drag these here. Now, one little catch when we're doing this copy is these calculations are gonna be linked to our T1 still. So now we gotta go and change this, and we also have to change the loads in our truss. So I'm gonna start by opening T2 here. And we can see it's still exactly the same roof truss. It's still got the same loads. Now the difference is we wanted to have uplift here. So I'm going to scroll down and where I've got my 60 PSF times 12 feet, I'm gonna set that to zero now. And I'm going to look at uplift. And if I go back to the example, I believe we said, yeah, 55 pounds per square foot uplift and um, 12 foot tributary width. So I'm gonna enter this as a negative load this time since it's uplift minus 55 PSF times 12 feet. And that gives me my 660 PLF uplift. And I can scroll up here and I'll see, the diagram looks a little funky right now, but you can see it's pulling the top cord up. Okay, so that's good. I'm now just gonna go quickly and go to my top cord. And the only thing I should have to do here is where it says link. I'm just gonna make sure to link it to E2 now, uplift loads and top cord. And here we go. We know it's good. So the top cord was in tension. We can see we're at 87% in tension. Um, it makes sense to the top cord's in tension because it's uplift. So it's, it's pulling the top cord apart. And so we're confident that at least for the top cord, the snow load was governing. 
Now, if um, uplift was governing, one thing we could do here, we could change the duration factor to the wind duration factor. And boom, that gives us a big increase in capacity as well. Um, so that's always kind of a, a trick we've got up our sleeve so that we don't have to upsize a member for uplift. Next, I'm going to go to bottom cord, and we're going to do the same thing. So instead of linking to the snow loads, we're going to lift to the uplift loads and bottom cord. And again, we see 61%. Life is good. It's still a passing. Everything is fine. We had it at snow load. We could change it again to wind loads, and we can see it, it improves our allowable compression. And finally, we're going to do the same thing with the webs. And I'm going to go link, uplift loads, webs. And again, everything passes. So in this case, this was entirely governed by the snow load. And so with that, what we've done, if I go back to my truss, um, we've now checked that the truss under uplift loads is fine and under snow loads is fine. If I go to my member schedule now, you'll see snow loads, analysis calculator. Now we've got top cord, bottom cord, webs, 81, 92, 36, uplift loads, 54, 48, 21. And we know that these members are matching so that it's the same truss that we're designing. And so that's about it. We've designed our gazebo truss now for um, snow loads and uplift loads. So before we jump into the second example, um, maybe now's a good time. If anybody's got any questions, I'd be happy to perhaps try to help answer them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks for running through that, Laurent. I've had a few questions come through from people that have kind of just been saving because I think it would be best to, to ask at the end here. Um, the first question or the first two have to do with the load input and so Ahmad asked, what about if we have a horizontal wind load? And then Sam asked if it's possible to isolate the overhangs of the truss eave um, to account for uh, increased loads. So I was thinking maybe you can go into that truss calculator and show them um, the different ways you could input loads, maybe element by element or node by node um, at the bottom. Absolutely. So on the first question about lateral wind loads, what I'll do now is I'll, I'll just make a copy of this just so that we're not messing with the original one. But um, actually, I'll start with the second question because I, I think that's a little easier to answer for now. If we wanted to just increase the um, uplift load on the eaves, if you scroll down, we've actually got a specific load input for our eave loads. And by default, you'll see it's actually set to be equal to this one. So we entered 6660 or 660 um, and it matched it, but nothing, if we say wanted to do, uh, have twice, whatever that is, I could just do times two and then minus 1320. And if I go look at my diagram, sorry, it's a little uh, scrunched up right now, but you can see it's the 1320 on the eaves and then 660 on the rest. So I hope that answers the question. That's that's very specific as well for the, the eaves, but I hope that that clears that up. Now, as for lateral wind loads, by default right now, we're only considering um, gravity or, or perpendicular to the cords. However, um, there is ways that we can get around this. So if I wanted to say not have anything here, I could just set this to zero. Now I've got zero loads on my truss right now, so it doesn't like me. Um, but what I can do is I can go on the advanced loads. And what you'll see here is we've got the different elements and different nodes. So if I wanted to enter, say, a distributed load, a wind load, I could enter, say, element number one. Say I've got 100 pounds per linear foot. And then I've got my orientation. Right now is 90 degrees. And let's just go see what does that look like. We've got as a downwards 100 pounds per linear foot load. If I wanted to say have it horizontal, I could just set this to zero. And all of a sudden, it doesn't look too pretty on the diagram, unfortunately, but we've got that lateral 100 pounds per linear foot. And I could then go do this for say element number five, because that one's also there. And I just type the 100 and type zero. And scrolling up, I could see I've got my 100 and my 100. 
And then if I look at, say, my displacement, you can see the truss is, is getting pushed sideways. Same with the bending moment or the axial loads are going to adapt for those loads. So I, I hope that answers the question. If this is something that you're checking often on your trusses, um, we're always looking to be improving these. So that's definitely something that we might be able to make it a little easier to enter these loads. So post that in the chat if that's something that, that would be interesting to you. We're, we're always looking for ways to improve. All right, thanks for answering both those, Laurent. Um, two questions from John. Uh, the first one was, so when you were linking, um, in the design only calculator, we had the option to link um, basically top cord envelope, web envelope, bottom cord envelope, and then it went individual. Yeah. Um, he was just confirming that when you go with a custom truss in the truss analysis, that doesn't allow you to do the envelope. Um, you, you go member by member. Is he correct there? Let's take a look. So if I create a custom truss, you'll see we've actually got these three different types, right? Top cord, web member, bottom cord. When you go and create your trusses, you're going to enter the member type number. And what this member type number corresponds to is right here, this table. Top cord is member number zero, webs number one, bottom cord number two. And so when you're entering your different um, uh, things in your, in your uh, truss, if say you put in your your top cord as member type number two or one or or whichever number, what those envelope numbers are gonna those envelope links are going to do is they're just gonna look at what's the maximum for member type zero, that's the top cord. What's the maximum for member type one, that's the webs. What's the maximum for member type two, that's the bottom cord. I hope that kind of makes sense. Yeah, that was a great explanation too of the the member numbers and how those kind of come into play with custom. Oh, John said it did not make sense. Uh, oh no! <laughs> so, so thanks for sending that through, John. Uh, basically, so the one thing with the um, the custom truss, because he also mentioned there's not an Eve input uh, availability. So when you go yeah. into custom, that is fully custom. So we're gonna start off with a kind of we see on the top right hand side or what Laurent showing here a very simple truss that you can then modify these node locations um, and element locations as you can see Laurent doing here so you can imp input an eve if you'd like um, we just don't have that eve input for the custom capability yeah, and what I'll add here is for the, those custom trusses obviously these are um, they're really, really powerful. They're not necessarily the easiest or um, time time friendly ways to build a trust. Personally, I've used them quite often, and and you can get pretty quick at doing this um, if you do it enough. But what I'll say is, if you've got trusses that you're often designing and they're not uh, supported in our list right here, send us an email because that's something that we can easily add to our uh, selection of trusses, and then that way. You know, tell us how you want to configure it, what's the different things that you would change on it, and we'll be able to adapt to that. Um, so we, we want to save you time. Um, so again, the custom trust is really there. If you're if you're in a bind or you're doing something really crazy, um, you can really make it um, do crazy stuff, but um, you can still uh, work with this. And then I think the last question here from John, then I'll have to pop over to the, the next questions is uh so his real question was when you go into the design only so yeah. like your top cord copy bottom cord copy bottom cord top copy i've been talking too much today right. um when you link um do you have the ability when you link from t3 to select the envelope or is it just kind of um yeah, yeah. there we go so it's still here um again just the one little thing with the custom trusses, right? Top cord, if you decide to do a crazy thing, that top cord might not actually correspond to say like a proper top cord, um, but that's that's gonna be entirely up to you and how you want to design these, right? Um, it's, uh, oh, I'm seeing John, you just, you don't have that on your trust. Yeah. I think for the, for the sake of time here, John, what I'll do, I'm gonna reach out to you directly 
let's go ahead and set up a chat um, with you and I, and we can make sure we're kind of up to speed and make sure we have all your all your questions answered on the the trust calculator because we want to make sure that's showing up. It might be something to do with upgrading um, certain calculations since the engineering team just pushed this out this week. Um, but we'll make sure to to hit up a screen share you and I and make sure we're all set there. Sounds good. Thanks for asking these questions, John. Honestly, yeah. it's, it's great feedback as well for us. I, I won't lie. We're always looking to get better here. And so all these questions are great um, opportunities for us to improve. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll make sure we got you squared away. Uh, question from Rick on, on kind of load orientation, uh, weak access, strong access. He was asking if a six by eight member could be selected for the web, even though he really would orient it as an eight by six. I'm curious your thoughts there. That's a great question, Rick. And at this exact moment, if you look, um, let's go with the webs actually. Um, if we look, we don't have an option to design say for a six by eight in the weak axis. Um, that's something that we're working on. It's probably in the next um, next few weeks we're going to add this. Um, and actually, Rick, thank you for bringing up an example of when that would be useful. Um, but yes, for now, you could say put a six by eight and check it. The only thing, obviously, for buckling, if you're not looking at um, bracing in individual directions, that, that's going to be fine. It's just for bending, it's going to be looking at it in strong axis right now instead of, of weak axis. But that's something that we'll be looking to to change very shortly. All right, thank you. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Good question. Um, just making sure I'm having all the questions here. Um, so, Ahmad, I'm I'm looking through your questions. I'm I'm thinking this is a, a question around load linking and how we're talking between the two. Um, but Ahmad. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have Laurent hop into the next example for the sake of time, and then I'm gonna message you directly and make sure I understand your question fully, and then I'll make sure to ask it to Laurent. All right, thank you, Connor. I guess, um, should I just jump into the next example? Yeah, go ahead and jump into the next one. I just wanna to make sure we, we get at least a couple examples in here, and then uh, I'll make sure to, to to chat with Ahmad on his question and make sure everybody is aware and, and we get the answer there. Sounds good. And I'll come back to this at the end of the uh, the webinar, but just letting you all know for the next week, our team of engineers is actually gonna be running office hours sessions, I think three times per day. So I encourage you to go play with it, you know, break some things, come into our office hours and we'll work through it together. Um, we'll be here to help you. Um, you're not alone trying to discover this. Um, okay, so second example, just let me do this. Okay, so um, a second example, we're going to design a cantilever truss. And I came up with this example quickly. I don't know if anybody of you were ever on the um, AISC's steel bridge team, perhaps in university or something. That, that, that's something I did when I was a student. Um, it's really cool. We designed our own bridges. We welded it, did all the machining ourselves and really learned how to how to work with steel. It was a really, really fun thing and, and to get to see it actually get loaded and, and all that fun stuff. So that's where the inspiration came from. Um, we did a lot of Warren trusses. So that's that's what it looked like. And oftentimes they would have a cantilever span on those bridges. That's part of the, the rules for the competition. Um, and then I added a picture there you can see of like a, a cool looking building that's got a cantilever span as well. Uh, but basically, the, the aim here with this example is to kind of show you some of the more fancy stuff we can do with our trust analysis without jumping straight into a custom analysis. And as well, what we're going to look at, we're only going to look at the bottom cord in this case, but we're going to look at doing that with wood as well as doing it with uh, steel, just so we can get an idea with both materials. So it should be a bit of a shorter example, but just to give you an idea here. So. With that said, I'm going to jump right back into clear calcs. Here we go. And what I'll do is I'll actually just create a new project. So create a new project. Russ webinar two. And for project address, we can, uh, I'm just going to skip that for now. I, I'm not creative enough to think of an address on the spot. Um, okay. 
create a new calculation, we're going to go with our trust analysis wizard. And in the example, we had six bays into our Warren truss. And actually, I believe we enter five, five. So five units and our um, total length was 120 feet. So I'm gonna enter this and our total height was 12 feet. Okay, so you can see this again, just for the sake of, of not making this too much of a burden, I'm just gonna hide the self weight. And you can see now it looks a little bit clearer. So two things we had said, we had, first of all, we had a cantilever and then we only, we had a point load at the tip of the cantilever as well as a distributed load on the cantilever span only like a unbalanced load case. So where I'm gonna to wanna to make these changes is I'm going to scroll down and we got a bit of a sneak peek at it earlier to the advanced loads area. And here you can see it shows you every single node, every element, as well as the connectivity of those. We're not gonna to worry too much about the connectivity. Um, that's really more if you do in those fancy custom trusses. So um, if that's something that interests you, I'd be happy to do a, a separate webinar on that. But for now, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to this. And we can see we've got two supports here. We've got a pin support at node zero, and a roller support at node 12. So at both ends. Now, if I wanted to have two bays on the cantilever span, I would want to move that support from 12 to eight. And you can see that that's the, uh, my cursor hides it, but that's the, the red eight here, um, right under my cursor. I think maybe you can see it now. And if I wanted to get a confirmation, I can just scroll back up and I can see now, I've got my support here and here, and I've got that cantilever span. Next up, I've got my loads. So if I come here, I'm just gonna set this to zero. Now it's gonna give me an error because there's no loads. If I wanted to say add a point load, the point loads get a little tricky here because we add them to the elements, not the nodes. And so uh, some other trust analysis software typically you might have it at the nodes. Um, and in our case, we just added at the, uh, the element, but it really doesn't cause too much trouble. So if I look, the element that's at the end here is element number 20. And so I'm gonna scroll down element number 20. And you can see it asks me for my magnitude. And I think we had a thousand pounds. So if I just leave this like that, you'll see it actually added it at the mid span of my member, um, the thousand pound load. If I wanted to add it at the end of it, I'm going to go to my distance from start node here. And you can see we've got an equation here, L over two. So it's taking that element length, dividing it by two to put it at mid span. I can just remove that over two. And now it's gonna be at the end. So if I scroll all the way up again, I can see now I've got my thousand pounds at the tip of my cantilever. Now, I wanted to add a distributed load as well. I'm gonna go again, element 20 and magnitude I believe was hundred pounds per linear foot. Now I've got element 20 at the tip and I've also got 16 that's cantilevered. So I'm gonna enter element 16, hundred pounds per linear foot. And scrolling up, you can now see I've got my hundred PLF over this cantilever span and a thousand pounds at the end. So that's it, that's, we've entered our loads. We can see the bending moments this causes and we can see the um, axial loads, for instance. We can see we've got tension at the top, compression at the bottom, which is what we would expect for a cantilever span. Um, we can also see our displacement. We can see the tip of the cantilevers going down, right? And then we can also see our reactions, um, 6,500 pounds um, this way and then 1,500 pounds to prevent it from uh, tip, tipping over. So, Next, we're gonna design, we set the bottom cord. So if I come here, I'm gonna create a calculation. And to be honest, I'm just seeing time go by. So I think we'll skip the wood member for now. Uh, let me know, we can go over it again after, and we'll only do the steel member. So I'm gonna do steel member ASD um, and link to analysis module. And I'm just gonna rename this again, bottom cord. And I'm going to hit the link button here, T1. Again, a lot of members in this. We're looking at the envelope for the bottom cord. So I can select this. 
And now you can see it didn't match the uh, same thing as in a trust. And if we look why, because your um, webinar presenter forgot to do something and we kept it at timber, but we're gonna change this to hot rolled steel or just regular steel really. And you can see by default, we've got a W12 by 45. So if I go back now, you can see, now we've got W12 by 45, it's picking it up. But we said we wanted to do a HSS bottom cord. Um, good to know, W12 by 45 works but let's switch to a HSS cord. I can come here, type HSS. And let's say we've got a maximum depth requirement of let's say eight inches. And it looks like that's actually quite generous here. So if we scroll down, we could even say do six inches. And even then we're pretty happy, but let's do say we wanna keep it square. So six by six by a quarter works. Let's go to say a, four by four by a quarter. That works much smaller, right? And just like that, we're done. <laughs> We've done it, right? We can see um, it's checking for the allowable compression. We're at 43% utilization. Allowable bending moment, we're at 39% utilization. And then the interaction, when we put those two together, 97% utilization. So we're confident this works. Now, we're still getting the warning the section specified doesn't match the link. So we could go to the T1 again. And scrolling down, bottom cord, HSS four by four by a quarter. And it's recalculating the bottom cord. And now we don't have that warning, right? So quick thought here. The cool thing about the linking, and this is where it gets really useful, if say, for instance, we've got um, a client that decides that their thousand pound um, elephant that they were having jump off the end of their cantilever is now two thousand pound elephants, um, we could go from a thousand pounds to two thousand pounds here. And instantly you'll see there's that little gear icon on the bottom cord. That means it's recalculating it with the new loads that it's coming out from that analysis of our truss here. And oh, we're getting the red X. So all of a sudden that four by four is not good enough anymore. So I can go to our member selector again. Say I wanted to keep with a four by four. Eh, if I go to a five sixteens or a 99%, if I wanna feel a little bit more comfortable, I could go to a three eight. So I can pick that and now I'm comfortable. I can click here again on the truss and final check four by four by three, oops, three sixteens is right here. And here we go. It's gonna do a final check on this, but we know that it's gonna pass. And that's it. We've designed a bottom cord of our steel truss here. So that's about it for this example. I'm just gonna hop right back into our presentation now. Um, if you'll just give me one second. Here we go. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier. So we have trust office hours. We're pretty excited about this new feature at ClearCalcs. Um, and we want to make sure that you are as successful as possible trying it out. And so this is something that we're probably going to keep going with new features as we release them or something like that. I'm looking forward to getting your feedback on, on if this is useful and if this works. But basically, um, our engineering team here in North America is going to put aside half an hour, three times a day to just basically be here to help you with trusses. So if you're working on a truss design and for some reason the linking's not working right or something doesn't quite make sense to you, just hop into these things. You're never more than a few hours away and we'll have one of our engineers. Oftentimes it'll be me. It might also be Eva who's run um, some of our webinars before. Um, come say hi, come ask your questions. We'll be more than happy to help you. Um, so for now, we're gonna start these tomorrow and we're gonna run these until next Thursday. So that's April 27th. Um, come join us, come chat. Um, hey, if you're having a bit of a boring day, although I imagine most of you are all pretty busy, but if you are having a bit of a boring day, join us, You know, come chat about dresses. We'll be more than happy to, to, to show you around and, and 
at the same time, hear about what we can do to make it better with our analysis um, packages. And just a little bit more here, we've got three blog articles about trusses. If you are laying in bed and you're looking for something to read and you wanna talk about trusses, take a look at these. And I think, uh, oh yes, we had one more thing here. A couple other new things in clear calcs. Um, if you get the what's new emails, you would have seen those, but um, something that was requested quite a bit was having shear keys in retaining walls. So we now support that. You can just add your shear key depth and we'll do the, take care of the math for you. We'll make sure that your shear key is strong enough and we'll check at your sliding factor of safety. We've also got main wind force resisting system load calculations. Um, our team here has been calling it the muiferous. Um, curious to hear what you guys call it um, and for just the crazy ones calling it that. Um, but we'll give you your, your wind pressures here that you can use in your calculations as well. Um, we've also added support for the Florida Building Code 2020. And that one's a bit a uh, bit more time ago, but anything that's ACI 318.19 for concrete, so concrete beams, foundations, all that fun stuff, we've got full support for the new provisions in there now, which if your state's working off the IBC 2021, um, that's mandatory for the code now. So you can rest assured that it's fully supported. And I'll leave it to Connor just to finish us up here. Yeah, last one here. And I alluded this to this in the chat earlier. Um, we're currently running a special offer until I believe next week on the 27th, um, where you can either sign up for the first time and get pro for the price of basic or upgrade. Um, Caleb, I saw during the webinar just now that you already upgraded to pro. So reach out to me and we'll get you squared away there. Um, so definitely, definitely let me know if you guys have any questions here. So that pro tier gives you everything you need to do for the trust design. So basic will allow you to do the analysis, but if you wanna be able to link to design and complete those, those utilization percentages that is in the pro tier, um, everybody will get a the link, whether you want to do monthly or yearly um, in a follow-up email. And then again, I, I saw you already upgraded, Caleb. So reach out to me. We'll get you squared away. Um, uh, Caleb, I'll just shoot you a, a message. You could reach out to me directly. Um, and then I guess the, the main question now, and th these are the types of questions I love. We start putting out the content. And it's all right, what's next? What's next? And that's what we're here for. Um, basically the big question now is, uh, connections. So when are we going to be able to do those connections, the bolting, um, the gusset plates, stuff like that. I uh, just curious your thoughts on that one, Laurent. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for bringing that up. Um, connections is definitely on our radar. I think I, I saw in the chat, just going through it really quickly, quite a few people brought that up. Um, if you don't mind, I would love to reach out individually to you all and hear a bit more about what that looks like for you when you're typically using these. Um, that's definitely something that we want to be able to, uh, to, to do in clear calcs and especially combining it with the linking so that everything fits in the same picture. So we'll be reaching out to you about that if, if you've shown some interest. Feel free to send us an email as well. Um, just hello at clearcalcs.com. And just tell us if you want to show some pictures, some drawings, how you typically do it, any information you can give us. It helps us make the best connection calculator you'll ever have seen. And that's that useful for you specifically. So let us know. Awesome. And shout out to, I don't know who is uh, all, we have quite a few people in this webinar, but um, shout out to everyone who gave their time for research sessions for us to put out this version one of this trust design calculator. Um, like Laurent just mentioned with the connections. Uh, yeah, George, Matt, foundation calculation, anything like that, let us know. Um, the best thing to do is send it to help at clearcalcs.com because then our on-duty structural support engineer kind of take that and put it into the, the feature requests and prioritize accordingly. Um, for the sake of time here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at all the open-ended questions and we're going to send a follow-up to you guys um, if we were unable to answer your questions. Uh, it looks like the big one is just connections. Um, so of course, we'll we'll really just be reaching out for more research sessions there. Uh, Rick, it looks like you're not seeing the trust types, the cool trust images. Um, let's connect. We'll make sure you're squared away. That should just be a plug-in kind of feature yeah. um, that you should be able to hover over, but I want to make sure you're seeing that. 
Um, yeah, it's not all right. hovering. All right. Yeah, let's here. I'll make a note here to connect with you, Rick. We'll make sure we'll get you squared away. Um, but really quick before we leave you guys, webinars coming up. You guys get all the emails, I'm sure. But we've got next week Clear Calc's Expert Hour with one of our users. Um, super interesting stuff. We just chatted with him this morning on um, some timber design for very beautiful churches, uh, super cool and complex designs. And then all things column design, wind load calculations. And if you guys have any other suggestions on what you think we should run webinars on, just like those feature requests, uh, let us know. All awesome. right. Well, thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day. And like I mentioned, if you've got an open-ended question, um, I'll make sure to get back to you on that. Thank you, everyone. And don't forget, check out our office hours. Come say hi. We'd love to hear from you. And we'll be here to help you with our trusses um, anytime in the next week. All right. Thanks, everyone. You have a good one. Thank you.